Good afternoon, traders. Welcome, welcome to the next in the Admiral's Trading Spotlight webinar series. Uh, my name's Paul. Great for you uh, all to be here with us today uh, on a, uh, a fascinating session where we're going to talk about how to trade short squeezes. More of that in a, uh, a moment. If you're uh, joining us here today or if you're watching this uh, later on the Admiral's YouTube channel, then be sure to, uh, to effectively just to make sure that you subscribe to the Admiral's YouTube channel. Give us a thumbs up if you like it or give us a thumbs down if it's, no, if it's not been for you. That's absolutely fine. We actually you know, appreciate all feedback. Uh, talking of which, at the end of this particular session, you'll get sent a, uh, a quick email with uh, a sort of a feedback request form for this particular session. We really appreciate it if you're talking you know, over 30 seconds just to fill it in. Gives you also an opportunity to talk about if there are any particular uh, items you'd like to see myself and my colleagues cover uh, for these sessions, then there's an opportunity for you to put that uh, down. But here we are today to talk about uh, trading a short squeeze. And uh, uh, Phillips, it's great to have you here. Okay, As always, I appreciate that uh, here at Admirals, we have a, a truly global audience. So wherever you are in the world, you're very, very welcome to be joining us. We hope you're safe and well and uh, and managing to prosper in what has been a rather uh, eventful 2022 already uh, we also appreciate that you know there's a broad spectrum of people who join us in terms of their trading experience and knowledge some people who are just at the start of their trading journey others who've you know been trading for a good while you're very welcome there'll all be something here for you to be able to sort of just take a part understand and utilize in your own trading so without further ado let's uh, switch across to the slides uh, and talk about you know about how to uh, trade a short squeeze so just bear with us a moment Okay, let's bring that up. Excellent, excellent. So that's fantastic. I uh, I'm really uh, uh, hope you can hear me. Hope you can see me. Hope you can see the slides on uh, trading short squeeze. Uh, you know, we're going to talk about this as a rather kind of an interesting phenomenon. And I thought we would uh, I thought we would revisit this simply because you know uh, what we're experiencing in some of the markets at this present moment. You know, this actually might be quite useful to you might be quite pertinent, might be quite apt based upon you know, what we've been seeing in terms of uh, market movements over the last uh, um, couple of months. So, you know, it becomes a bit of a useful session that you can use uh, yourself. So here we are, Admirals, a uh, Forex and CFD broker with a wide range of financial instruments that have got global presence, but local support, uh, licensed and regulated across a wide range of regulatory environments, providing competitive spreads on the most popular trading products and allowing you to engage with both the MT4 and MT5 platform. If you have any questions about Admirals, please get in touch with your account representative uh, and they'll be very happy to help guide you. Uh, also, if you want more timely content, then be sure to sort of subscribe to the Admirals Telegram channel there, as you can see at Admirals on Telegram, uh, whereby what you'll see is the uh, content team will put out some uh, uh, fascinating pieces on there on Telegram uh, and also give you just a little bit more uh, timely news. So if that uh, would be of help to you, make sure you subscribe to uh, Admirals there. Uh, and what we might find is, as you can see, my uh, wonderful assistant uh, has just put a link to that in the chat box there. So be sure to uh, click on that and, uh, uh, and enjoy the benefits of it. So what are we going to talk about today in terms of the agenda? Well, you're probably going to want to know what is a short squeeze. So all will be explained, ladies and gentlemen, have no fear. We'll talk about where does one show up on the charts or where do you see the kind of the best opportunities? Uh, and I'll also discuss, you know, what do we need to be aware of with a short squeeze? What is it that, you know, we uh, need to take on board? And most important is traders, right? Well, you know, how can we benefit from a short squeeze? Uh, and then if there's time left at, at the end, what we'll do is we'll take a look at, at you know, short squeezes in the uh, particular live market. So be sure to stay with us till the very end. And as I said, we'll switch across to the live charts to, to have a look at what's going on in the markets at the moment. So to those of you who don't know me, my name's Paul. I've traded for many years, traded for hedge funds, traded for high net worth clients. Uh, primarily, I like to focus on trading FX indices and commodities. Uh, and I tend to be a... Uh, trend trader for sort of longer term trading and a sort of reversal mean reversion trader for my shorter term intraday 
uh, trading, both of which are uh, useful for uh, today's explanations. So there you go, ladies and gentlemen. Let's talk about how to trade a short squeeze. So it would help me, ladies and gentlemen, just uh, for those of you here joining us live uh, today, to understand you know, what, if any, experience you have of short squeezes. Do, do you know what they are? Do you not know? Do you trade them? Do you not know how to trade them? That's absolutely fine. There's no, uh, there's no judgment, there's no wrong answer. It's just actually fascinating to understand if people really can understand and see how they develop, how they play out, and actually how you can utilize them you know, in your uh, own particular uh, uh, trading. So it'd be interesting to know if you just drop down the chat box, you know, what, have you, what has been your own particular experience? So Philip says, never heard the term before. Raquel says, no idea. Well, that's great. <clears throat> that's why you're here, ladies and gentlemen. All right, that's why you're here for me to educate you on you know, what a short squeeze is. And what might occur is as we go through and look at a few charts and talk about it, is you might actually recognize what is going on in terms of the price action. You just maybe didn't realize what it was or what the kind of official term for it was or how, how you could turn that into, you know, from a threat into an opportunity. So as it says there, do you know what a market short squeeze is? Do you know how to trade or do you have experience of such? And as I said, what you might find is that you might find that actually you do have experience, you know, you just didn't know it. You just didn't know the, uh, the right label. And, you know, I don't want to get too caught up on labels, so to see, so long as you can recognize the price action what's, and understand what's actually going on in the underlying market, that is the important element. So, as it says there, knowing how, why, and where they play out can be beneficial for a trader to know. And in this session, we're going to learn everything you need to know, like how to spot one on your charts, what happens during and after one, and how you can trade them yourself. And that's what we'll do. And as I said, We'll look at some charts, okay, and we'll switch across the live markets to be able to get an understanding of that. So, what is a short squeeze? So, as the slide explains there, a short squeeze occurs when a stock or any other instrument jumps sharply higher in price. This forces short sellers to exit their positions to avoid greater losses which means that they have to buy the market. And what that does, by them having to sort of flip from you know, being sellers to buyers, that adds to the upward buying pressure, forcing prices even higher. So a short squeeze, as the name implies, is where we're finding short sellers, people who have been selling the market, are getting squeezed. Why are they getting squeezed? Well, there can be quite a few number of reasons, which we'll look at over the next couple of slides, but for the moment, all we just need to know is that you know, a short squeeze occurs when the instrument you're trading jumps sharply higher in price after a downtrend, okay? Not necessarily when it's going sideways, but after the price has been going in a downset. And what happens is, you know, and the reason that could jump is, well, we'll discuss, okay? There could be lots of reasons, but it's about being able to recognize what actually occurs. Uh, and then what happens is, you know, remember, you know, a market is a market is made up of two transactions, all right? You have buyers and sellers. Lots of people who have been short, okay? They've been short sellers. They've been selling that market. They realize that actually the market is no longer going to go down. It's no longer going to go further down and that they need to cover their positions. And if they've been a short seller, well, they now need to be a buyer to cover their position. And so what happens is that adds to the buying pressure. So what we see is what can sometimes be a very vicious almost really sort of strong move upwards. Uh, and that's, you know, that is quite, that's normally very clear on the markets, okay? And they're very clear on the chart, sorry. They're very clear to see. Uh, and, you know, once you sort of demonstrate an understanding of how to operate that, well, then, then you're in a position to sort of turn it, as I say, from a threat into uh, an opportunity. Uh, and if I just even look at this, and I'm going to give you some better examples as we go along here, but here we go. Let's just uh, draw in a bit of a level of uh, support there. Uh, in this particular example, and you know what? I don't know what time it's on. I don't know what instrument it's on. And it doesn't actually matter because, you know, you'll see short squeezes occur across all instruments and all time frames. Once you're in a position to recognize them, that's the important thing. And as I say, you know, it can happen across any time frame and any instrument. We're going to focus maybe a bit of the longer term um, uh, sort of examples today. But, you know, even though we'll be looking at lots of things like dailies and weekly charts, you will see the same price action occur on five minute charts, you know, one hour charts. So regardless of what you trade, regardless of your particular time frame, 
If you can understand short squeezes, okay, what is occurring, well, then that starts to give you, you know, a really um, a good, you know, it's a, it's a good opportunity, okay? It's a good opportunity. So, uh, in this particular example, I'm sure you can see for yourself, the price was basically, you know, it was in a quite a strong downtrend, wasn't it? We had a kind of a level of support here, and as always, I say, you know, uh, please excuse my, uh, please excuse my uh, uh, drawing. I'm a better, I'm a better trader than I am an artist, all right? But you can get the idea is that we had support there, okay? Price bounces off that support. Price then basically comes down and breaks that level of support. And what occurs is we can see that when it breaks that level of support, that is a really very big, strong selling candle. Why is that? Well, the likelihood is, let's get with some of these uh, drawings. The likelihood is, is that, you know, what we've seen is that people have recognized that that level of support is there. And then once it's broken, there's probably lots of people with short uh, uh, orders there, okay? Orders to basically short the market as it breaks to what would be new lows. And of course, price moves down. And that's what we see, you know, and everybody's very happy and more people short and more people short. And, you know, and the market closes down here. And you know, people with the shorts there at that particular time are probably pretty happy. But what we see is over the next couple of sessions or the next couple of periods is price starts to retrace back. People are probably not that worried because it's not unusual for price to want to test, okay? You know, test and flip so that support becomes resistance, resistance becomes support. But actually, you know, what happens is, you know, when it starts to move down here, people start thinking, well, okay, yeah, that was just a little pullback before it moves down. There's probably people who've shorted here, okay? People who didn't short here, you know, there's probably a few people short. And then what happens is we get this, you know, kind of rejection candle. And suddenly the next couple of periods, we're now back up at that level. And what we find is that you know, all those people who are short are now worried and now concerned, okay? You know, they're now, that they're, they're, their shorts are no longer gonna work. And so what we have is, you know, people sort of just getting nervous and they start flipping from being on the short side to the long side. And that's what sort of adds to this kind of buying pressure that we see all the way quickly up. So in many ways, in many ways, it could be termed a variation of a false breakout. Right, which you might have seen, you might have recognized, you might have understood, you know, and it'd be interesting to sort of, you know, to, to see that happen. But there are variations of it. Okay? And as I go through in the next few slides, we'll, we'll talk about, well, actually, you know, what, what can we do? You know, how, you know, are there specific particular setups and ideas that you can look at that, you know, that you can enable to be able to sort of recognize when they happen in future? Because, they, you know, these happen all the time, all right? They happen all the time. So, you know, when it comes to understanding a short squeeze, it helps to understand what is going on in the underlying market. So short squeezes happen when short sellers are being squeezed out of their positions, normally at a loss, not always, but, but normally at a loss. So short sellers that are opening positions in instruments they think will decline in price for whatever reason. And for whatever reason, sometimes it's very clear, sometimes it might not be but there is a turnaround in price decline. And every buying transaction now sends the price actually higher and higher. And the faster that happens, the more it kind of like scares the short sellers into needing to cover their position to stem their, uh, to stem their losses. And that's the kind of, you know, if you, can, if you can just get yourself into the mindset of being able to understand, okay, you know, what has occurred, the kind of psychology of what's going on, as we've just uh, sort of said there is a case of, you know, there will have been lots of people who will have had short orders here because they probably saw price here, provided a level of support, saw it bounced off, it comes up, they start to think, well, actually, it's a bigger descending triangle pull, standard classical technical analysis. Uh, and what happens is, you know, there's lots of orders there. And as I said there, bang, those orders get triggered, people see it move, and then there's people who are probably chasing, okay, who basically wait till it effectively closes, and then they go short here. So you've got people short here, you've got people short here, Price pulls back a bit. Then you've got more people short here. So you've got, you know, shorts here. You've got shorts there. You've got shorts here, okay? And price drops down a bit. But then once it starts to react, once it puts in, in this particular case, double bottom, and starts to effectively start closing up here, these people are nervous. So they're closing out their positions. These people are nervous. They start trying to close out their positions. These people here start, you know, getting nervous. So you basically get that real sort of strong snapback in that case up to the 50 period moving average. So it's a said, it's about trying to just take a bit of time to understand what has occurred in the underlying sort of, let's call it like price dynamics that are going on. That, you know, price has broken up to a new low, 
it is if initially appeared like you know it's going to continue in that trend it's going to you know it's going to continue in that trend but actually what happens is price turns around and it turns around very quickly and you know and it snaps its way back and of course as it snaps its way back all those short sellers get you know they get a little bit nervous they get a little bit apprehensive and decide to cover their positions because they don't want to take any more losses or any losses at all so of course remember they've been short sellers so now they have to be buyers and that's what basically sends the market racing higher okay over the next few periods and that as i say once you can recognize that and see that that can actually turn from being a threat into an opportunity for you traders so based upon what we've just explained there how many people there think that have probably seen a similar price action to that in their uh, in their own trading experience how many of them will have, you know, sort of maybe seen things like this, which they may have termed as a false breakout or just, you know, it's a, a failed short, but not really maybe understood what was the kind of underlying dynamics going on in the market. And as I said, you know, at the start, it might be a case that you've probably seen price action like this occur before, but maybe not really been able to understand what it was called, what it was termed, why it was happening. And also, how can you actually turn it to an opportunity for yourself? So when it comes to trading a short squeeze, how do you recognize a possible short squeeze occurring? Well, what you'll find is that active traders, okay, experienced traders, knowledgeable, educated traders, they are aware of any relevant news items that might be there for that particular instrument, which might provide the catalyst, the impetus for the quick change in, in price trajectory. They'll also be aware of the overall sentiment of that instrument and they'll be aware of suitable technical levels. And, and it's when you see those particular three elements come together, that is when you can be prepared for you know, a possible short squeeze to occur. And that is when you can be ready to sort of pounce on that as the price reverses and as it starts to take off in that new direction. And what it does is it allows them to identify possible points for a squeeze to occur and also the price action that may transmit, you know, a, a squeeze will occur. And, you know, like all of these things in trading, it takes a little bit of practice. You need to take a little bit of work at it, all right? You need to understand, you know, what's going on as part of the, uh, um, you know, as part of, the, let's say, the overall bigger picture. Um, but, you know, with a little bit of practice, a little bit of experience, then you'll start to be able to recognize them pretty rapidly. And as I said, we've had quite a few happening recently. Um, so, you know, they gave us a great example to, to look at and also, you know, it just seemed very apt for us to, to talk about this now because I have no doubt that there are going to be a few more short squeezes over the uh, over the coming months. So Phillips has said, uh, I've seen this situation several times, but not fully understood it. Well, that's great. I appreciate the feedback, Phillips. That's, you know, that's what these uh, that's what these sessions are for, right, to be able to educate you. Forewarned is forearmed, as they, uh, as they say, and being able to just even recognize it, even if you might not be trading it, but when you see it on a chart, that can all enormously help you with that, okay? So, uh, you know, take that uh, take that on, uh, on board, all right? You know, and I said, relevant news items can be a great help, okay? They can make a big difference. Uh, understand the overall sentiment, okay? Which could be the sentiment of the market, if you may be trading, trading you maybe might be trading, you know, currencies or commodities or indices, understanding if there's a, you know, if there's a switch from a risk on to a risk off environment. But also recognizing some of the, you know, the uh, suitable technical levels, all right, suitable areas within which, you know, you can, uh, um, at which, you know, a short squeeze may well occur. And so here's, you know, here's a, it's a good example. It's one, of, it's an example I traded myself, okay, from a couple of years ago. Uh, as you can see, it is the pound against the U.S. dollar on the daily chart, and uh, hopefully what you can see here should be very clear is that we were in a very very clear, very strong downtrend there. Okay, that was an example of you know the British pound sterling getting uh, in a week and the US dollar getting strong. But I wanted to draw you uh, your attention to this particular level here, this because this starts to become useful for us in terms of identifying you know where and how we might be able to trade a short squeeze. Uh, and what we had here was this was a, you know, a big level here. Okay, one twenty. All right, which at that time. We hadn't touched for a while, all right, uh, and it was, you know, a very significant level of support. It is 
you know, what you'll hear me talk about as a BRN, it's a big round number. Uh, you know, and I'm always sort of saying to traders in their analysis, you know, if price is near a big round number, something that has probably preferably got like a triple zeros in it, okay, well then you should be, you know, you want, might want to take, uh, you know, take notice of that, take, you know, be, you know, be aware of that, because those are areas where squeezes may occur. Because, you know, um, just, you know, traders can be, traders are human, okay, traders can be human, they can be lazy. Uh, and so, you know, it, instead of, uh, you know, some big traders, big institutional traders, you know, they may not be able to view the charts every minute of every day like, you know, sort of active traders might be. So they'll be just going off big red number because it's human, it's a human level to sort of chunk down the data into small piece of information, you know, and I'm showing my age, so, you know, they may have been on the phone to the broker saying, you know, buy me the pan against the dollar when it gets down to 120 because I feel it's got value for me. If you're a big institutional trader, it might have a two, five, 10 year um, viewpoint. So as price comes down here, as price comes down to this level, we can see the first time it gets near it, okay, excuse me, uh, and then comes away from it, doesn't it? Uh, and then it tests it again, all right? Uh, and on this day here, okay, this day here, I think it's about the 3rd of September, it's kind of like just people back from summer holidays, everybody thought it'd go down to 120. During the day, it actually went down and broke 120, okay, and actually but came all the way back up, all the way back up and closed, closed back up above 120. So in itself, that is already a false breakout, all right? A false breakout with, you know, a, a bullish uh, pin bar rejection handle. But also the next day we can see is the next day you had a really, see how they had a really big, strong day the next, a really big, strong, okay, you know, uh, um, large candle. Why is that happening? That's because there's probably lots of people who had orders, okay, who had short orders at 120, you know, maybe maybe they had a bit like 119.99, 119.95, 119.90, etc. They had short orders, thinking that if the big round number broke, price would continue and it would you know continue in its collapse. So they've got short orders there. But as soon as it a it didn't do it, couldn't even close beneath it that day. It comes back up, closes above 120, and then the next day, you know what's happened is that these traders are now seeing, looking at that, thinking this might well be a double bottom. Okay, which is a reversal pattern, and I'm stuck short beneath 120. Well, then they want to cover, they want to get out of their trade because they don't want to you know they're already trade is already in a loss, they don't want to take any more deeper losses. So, what do they need to do? They need to flip from being a short seller to being a buyer, which means they're buying, 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 which means it's given us all this strength here. And what we can see is that actually that basically that was in fact the, the, the bottom there for the next year for the rest of the year. That was literally the bottom for the year in there as that short squeeze happened the shorts came in they got squeezed price reacted strongly okay you know basically rip sword you know it whip sword its way all the way back up before we saw the start of a really big strong pound against us dollar trend so you know there was as i said you know it's about understanding understanding the kind of you know that recognized really good trend which you could see on that daily chart it clearly were also about recognizing you know the subtle technical levels that 120 is a big round number. And also understanding the price action, how is price reacting around there, okay? Looking at it, is it, you know, is it getting there? Is it rejecting it? Can it not get beneath that level? Can it not close beneath that level? On a, you know, in this case, a daily or a weekly basis, that in itself is telling you that, you know, it just doesn't have the energy to continue and that we're actually likely to flip. And this might well be, you know, the, the, the first part of a short squeeze that is, is about to sort of, you know, uh, tear much, much higher. Um, so here's a bit of a different example of one, okay? Uh, this is actually Tesla, and this is a four-hour chart here, ladies and gentlemen, Tesla on a four-hour chart. Uh, and I'm hoping you can see for yourself that, you know, the price is in a very nice downtrend. Tesla is you know, available to trade on the uh, um, uh, Admiral's platforms. You'll be able to sort of trade that on the MT4, MT5 platforms. You'll find it there, okay? Uh, and it's a very popular trading product. But what we could see here in this particular case was that you know, price had been in a downtrend. You might be saying, well, you know, Paul, price was actually at a, uh, um, in a sort of downwards wedge. It looked like price was breaking and going low at the start of this week. And then what happened was, you know, the next day, okay, the next day, the market opened up a gap so from closing here and opening here we had a gap up 
Okay, and you know, there's there's gaps, and you know, you can see there's gaps in the Tesla between open and price. It's not a, it's not a complete shock, but what we saw was that day was you know an absolute, you know, it was a kind of look at that, you know, real strong buying day. People had thought that it was going to continue, it was going to kind of uh, break the kind of 180 level. I think there was uh, also a bit of a news piece that Mr. Musk put out. Okay, everybody thought it was going to go short of 180, turned around, and actually, what we can see next day is all those shorts. All those shorts, he probably had orders to sell at like kind of 180 and beneath 184, 183, 182, 181. All of them are suddenly squeezed, aren't they? All of them, you know, in a bad way. All of them, if they haven't had their stops triggered, they are about to, if they haven't used any stops, more fuel then, well, then they're now they are sat on quite significant losses, some of them. What do they want to do? They want to clear down their positions. They want to cover their positions. So what that means is they have to go from being a seller to being a buyer. So, of course, they're buying more and more. And actually, what we see then is actually Bosch. We can actually see Tesla, you know, for the next few weeks, in fact, you know, the next couple of months, started to rally, rally hard. And, you know, from being down at like 180, a couple of months later, it's up at $240. So, as I said, I hope you can see that's a bit of a scruffy example, but sometimes that's what you get. You know, sometimes you don't always get nice, pretty, perfect, you know, uh, um, charts. Price action, that's, that's, you know, welcome to trading. That's the way it goes. But it's about being able to recognize the underlying dynamic, okay? Being able to be comfortable with the concept of what is actually going on. That is what becomes the, the key element for us. So, you know, here's a, kind of a, another scruffy example from a recent price action. So this is the S&P 500 daily. Um, you know, and there's a couple of, there's actually a couple of examples of it on here, but we're just, we're going to switch across the live chart in a minute, but I just want to talk about the kind of the recent one uh, where, you know, what we saw is once again, you see how we had price around this big round number, 4,000, 4,000. So, you know, even that is, you know, even if that is a, um, a useful tip for you traders, just to basically put that, you know, 1,000, uh, understand those kind of big triple zero numbers levels, recognize that they can be very significant and they're, they can be good spots where short squeezes may well occur. What we had here was, you know, price, you can see here, price having topped out in March, price has been in a very significant downtrend, hadn't it? Um, you know, and it actually had a level of four, you know, just uh, under there about 41.50. But what we're kind of interested in is, is, you know, just looking at how price reacted at the 4,000 level. Price, you know, it, it worked its way down, it's ground its way down, but it's put in one rejection candle. And then what happens is it, it bounces up there and you would get a couple of strong candles there. There's clearly, you know, people who are short beneath 4,000 were covering their position. Then what happens is, well, basically, you know, we get another strong shift, another strong move down beneath 4,000, right? Which now starts to get people, or, you know, it starts to get people concerned. All the people who are, all the people who are short here and covered here are now getting short again. What we see is price goes down and look at the price action there, okay? That's a, you know, you might call that, you know, kind of a, um, uh, some people might call that a dragonfly doji. But you know, it's not a, it's not a, it's not a very strong selling signal. It's not a strong selling signal. And if you were to look into the actual uh, internal price action of that day, you'll see that that was actually you know a swing occurred there. And so what do we see? We get you know a bullish day next day, another try, another. That. But once we once we get back up above four thousand, well, what we're seeing here is that all those people who have been short here, they suddenly realise they're on the wrong side of it. And invariably what occurs is we just get an absolute rally up here. Strong rally up there, okay, for around, I think it was around about, uh, from those days, it was like about 180 handles, okay, on the S&P over like a couple of days. Uh, and, you know, now we're going kind of sideways as it decides, is it going to actually sort of start to move its way up there? So once again, you know, a bit of a scruffy example, not, you know, not a, not a picture perfect one in any way, shape or form, but th that's what trading can be like, all right? You know, it's a, it's not always you know the, the you get the most perfect examples as much as you might um, as much as you might particularly uh, uh, like them. And uh, you know, here's another example in the ASX, okay? ASX, which is the Australian Stock Exchange, and it's kind of a it's one of a recent one for the last couple of months. It's it's interesting. You know, it's interesting to me for you know on, on many levels. Uh, you know, and what we see here, as I said, it's a daily chart, uh, you know, and I want you to have a look at, you know, 7,000, well, you know, what do you know? That's a big round number, big treble zero number. As I said, you know, take those on board. When you're, you know, when you're 
trading whatever instrument you're trading okay if there are big round numbers triple zero numbers nearby they can be good places to look at for you know a false breakup that becomes a short squeeze uh, and what you can probably see is you know early in the year you know seven thousand price has moved bounced off it there okay price has bounced off it a couple of times there putting a big w before it had kind of rallied its way up uh, and then invariably what happened is the faults break out to the north printed here and even star formation before price collapsed there again you can see how price collapsed all the way back down there okay and you know, you know that's a significant you know it's a significant move there from being up around near 7650 to down towards 7000 okay you know you have there uh, you know there's you know there's 650 handles there okay on the sx over the space of a couple of weeks that's that's you know that's not a it's not a move to be sniffed at ladies and gentlemen but we come back down to the 7000 area and just look at what happens the first day it doesn't get down to it okay but it closes near it the next day during the session it go trades down beneath 7000 kind of like what it had done here before but it closed above 7000 right that in itself is telling you the first example that hang on a minute there might be, you know, there might be a, a more buying pressure than you think. We might be getting a short squeeze here. What we see is then the two days later, we get a really strong close behind, uh, or rather below the 7,000 level. And that's when people start to think, oh, here we go. We're going short, you know. And so lots of people will be putting on short positions because they think, yep, 7,000 has finally cracked. We're going short. Let's all get short, okay? All aboard the Sharabang. We're going short only to see what happens next day, bang, bang, next day, okay? You know, when actually the price action takes off in the morning, it's gapped up, it's gapped up when it's opened here, the gap between where it's closed and where it's opened, and then prices rallying strongly throughout the day. All those people who got short, they're all panicking now, and what are they gonna do? They're all short, they're all panicking, so what do they do? Well, they basically shift, all right? They basically go from being shorts to buy. They have to cover their position. They don't want to take any losses. So they cover their positions. To cover their position, they have to be buyers. And what do you know? Basically, price rallies up strongly there for, you know, for that day there. There's a real short squeeze going on there. A couple of days later, all right, it comes back down to test 7,000 again. And, you know, and you can see, you know, it's pivoted around 7,000 quite significantly. But now it's, you know, gone from being, you know, it's now definite support before price makes its next leg up towards the 50 and 200 period moving average. So I hope you can see there, you know, the big round numbers, okay, they can be really good hunting spots, all right? You think of it like, um, you know, think of it like the place where you'd spot an ambush, right? You put an ambush, okay? You'd be sat there and you'd be waiting for price to, you know, come down into the area, it has to come down from it, you know, in the downtrend uh, and look at how does price react there? Uh, and you can see, and certainly in that example, you know, it closes the other side of that level. Everybody's sure. Everybody thinks they're doing really well. And then, you know, even just like within 24 hours, that picture has completely changed, right? And the traders are looking at a very, very different picture. It's been a false breakout. It's been a short squeeze, you know, and if you've been on the sidelines, well, this is now your opportunity to, to look at how, you know, how you get on board that and how you actually take some of that, um, you know, you get on board that trade for the, for the leg up for the next few sessions. That's just, as I said, turning it from a threat into an opportunity. Uh, and you know, here's another example. This is recent example. And this is the Nikkei, this is the weekly chart, okay? Weekly chart here. You're probably getting the idea already. Look at uh, what we're looking at here. Big round number there, wasn't it, ladies and gentlemen? 25,000. 25,000 on the Nikkei. Price has topped out here, okay, double topped, it, and actually price is falling down, isn't it? It's going down, it's in a downtrend. What happens is basically it breaks that during that week, and we'll have maybe I'll look at that on the daily chart, breaks that 25,000, but it can't close above it, it can't close beneath it, can it? Even though price gets pushed up, all right, and it closes, all right, it closes there. Yes, it's been a bearish close, but it's still closed above 25,000. The next week opens up, there's a gap up. And you can see what happens finally. You can see what happens. That's a proper short squeeze has occurred there. You know, there's basically, you know, buyers have stepped in, they've pushed all that price enormously higher. Uh, and invariably, what's happened is all those people who went short, all those people who had orders, you know, south of 25,000 to go short, they're caught on the wrong side. They have to cover, they have to buy the market, which basically just gives it a really strong uh, rallying up.
So Philip says, I assume this pattern can be burst into a long squeeze. You'd be absolutely right, Phillips, and that might be the subject of a uh, future session in a, in a month or two's time. So be sure to keep your uh, eyes peeled and watch the uh, watch out for the list of them coming out. But you're absolutely right. Okay, it's just that what we're seeing at the moment is you know we've seen quite a few short squeezes as as I'm showing here. So it seems a good example, a good time to actually look at short squeezes based on what we're seeing in the markets at this particular at this particular moment. But good question, Phillips. Thank you. So here's a few final points. Correctly timing a short squeeze can be very lucrative, but, but it requires a sound trading method to ensure that you can prosper from trading short squeezes. Remember, whenever any kind of trading uh, method, there is no perfection. And remember, with higher reward comes higher risk. And you have to recognize where you sit on that risk spectrum. Some people are very, very accepting of risk. Other people are very averse of risk. And that's fine. It's the most important thing is to know yourself, know how you will operate. That is what is key. But timing becomes very important. And that's why I was just saying, you know, looking at those big round numbers, those big treble zero numbers as a starting point, that is a really good starting point to look at, you know, how does the market react there? How does markets, you know, sort of, you know, look at uh, maneuvering when they get to those big levels? Because it might be, as I say, false breakout, which is a short squeeze, which then gives you an opportunity. And as it says, recognizing the correct price action to identify the squeeze as quickly as possible. Uh, you know, and that's a part about recognizing and understanding when you're seeing things like rejection candles at those particular levels, how that can be a, you know, a great opportunity for you. So in conclusion, a short squeeze occurs when an instrument's share price rises rapidly due to short covering short sellers will cover their position to stem deeper losses. They're forced to buy the market to cover their shorts. That's what drives price even higher. Good contrarian traders will look for opportunities to profit from squeezes that are setting up. But remember, timing is key to ensuring you get a good reward to risk. And you, know, you have to treat it as a bit of a short-term trade. It's perhaps not a trade you're gonna look and hold for months. It might be one that you hold for a week or so, right? Based upon you know, the actual price action. But you know, if you can learn to master them and to recognize them, it provides great opportunity for you. So with that in mind, why don't we go and have a little look at a, yeah, a few charts just for the last few uh, uh, minutes, just to basically you know, make sure that uh, you can see if what's going on in the live markets. But before you do that, okay, uh, just a reminder, you can join me this Friday where I'm back again, okay, where I'm going to be doing the trading strategies for beginners, part seven, where we're going to talk about candlesticks. In particular, we're going to look at what is a pin bar, a rejection candle, how can we use it in trading? So it would make very useful one to basically go in alignment with this uh, session on trading short squeezes. So, you know, join me two o'clock London time, Friday, 10th of June, check your inbox for the webinar link or go over to the uh, Admiral's website to, to be able to sort of click on that and register for the event. As always, you know, if you were <clears throat> want to contact Admirals, you can do so there. You can see global at admiralmarkets.com, drop us an email. Uh, and as I said, this video and all of our other educational content is on the uh, YouTube channel, Admirals Global, and also on facebook.com. <coughs> Excuse me. So I hope you found that useful. I hope that's given you a little bit of a, uh, you know, a hint of you know, what a short squeeze is and how it could be utilized in your own trading endeavors. If you bear with us a moment, what we'll do is we'll switch across to the chart and have a little look at what's going on at the, uh, at the moment. So just uh, bear with us for uh, a moment. Okay, let's bring these up. Let's bring the charts up here. Okay, super. So once again, I, I hope you can still see me and hear me. I hope you can see the uh, Admiral's uh, platform. And, uh, you know, if this is just an indices platform, which is what we've been looking at is what's been going on, um, uh, you know, occurring recently. Let's start quickly. We've just looked at the Nikkei on that weekly chart there. And that's, if you remember, we looked at that where it couldn't break 25,000 there back in a sort of March of uh, this year. If I go down to the sort of daily chart, okay, I'm looking at that particular period of time, this is what we can see here, okay, is that you can see, oops, let me just uh, be able to maneuver this for us. 
is that you know price was in that downtrend. You can see it was actually gapping down, all right? Gap down and closed beneath 25,000. The next day it closes, you know, quite significantly about 25,000. Everybody's short. Everybody's thinking 25,000 is broken. This is, you know, everybody thinks that the world is going to end uh, and everybody's short, all right? Sub of 25,000. But what happens the next day? The next day, okay, from, from here where we close, price gaps open, okay, gaps up on the open and then tries to test, but then continues to and closes back up above 25,000. It's a bit of a strong bullish day, isn't it? It's a strong bullish day. People, you know, those people who shorted beneath 25,000, what do you think is happening to them? They're probably getting a little bit worried now. They're probably thinking, crikey, you know, I was short 25,000. We closed that day at 25,370. You know, my position is underwater. Is that what I want to do? You have a couple of days where it looks like it might actually start to sort of go down. It's making its mind up. Uh, and then we get a very strong, you know, another strong bullish candle, right? That's telling me that, you know what, we're going long here. You know, we're, you know, this was a false breakout. So short squeezes occurred. And you can see what happens actually over the next few days, okay, over the next week or so, is that price rallies really, really strongly back up to that 200 period moving average. So, you know, it's a bit of a contrarian play, a bit of a contrarian setup. But as I said, you know, just being aware of the kind of overall sentiment, making sure there's a downtrend, looking at how price reacts when it gets those big round numbers, that can be, you know, a fabulous opportunity, all right, as, you know, as the market, you know, does a short squeeze and, uh, and effectively, you know, turns itself around. Uh, if you have a look at here, okay, what have we got here? DAX, okay, DAX on the weekly chart, all right, and that's, you know, that's what we've seen here is that, you know, this is the weekly chart, and the DAX had last year, had, you know, it done very well, but it was basically, you know, it, what we saw here was that, it was topping out here and 15,000, this 15,000 level here, it's acting as real support, okay? And then it broke, didn't it? It broke, broke significantly, woof. And it dropped all the way down to the 13,000, you know, and you can see there what happened in that week is that even during that week, it went all the way down, okay? And it went down about 500 points past it, but came careering back up before it rallied its way, almost back up to the 15,000 level. And if I look at that on the daily charts there, is that, you know, here we go, let me just remove this. Is that, you know, as I was saying, price kind of, it rallied all its way down. It opened and closed that day beneath the 13,000 level, which it hadn't been at for a many, you know, for a good while. So lots of people on the short side were thinking, you know what, this is my trade, I'm gonna be shorting here. You know, they're loading up on their short positions, but what happens the next day is, you know, it effectively, it makes, there's a higher low there for the low of that candle and it pushes way back up to 13,000, right? So maybe not necessarily, you know, absolutely superstar bullish, but the next day you can see what people have decided to kind of want. They've done that. There's a huge big move there. Okay. We've, you know, we've been down in what is a couple of days from being as low as 12,431 to high of just under 14,000. So, you know, you know, nearly a 1400 point shift and swing in that. And what we see is the price rallies its way up to that kind of, as I say, that 50 period moving average, uh, which is also close to that 15,000 level there. So, you know, the price action wasn't, um, price action wasn't necessarily, you know, the, uh, the prettiest, but as I was saying, you know, sometimes that is what occurs. Sometimes you don't get pretty. And if, you know, if we look at it here on the four hour chart, you know, price having got beneath it, well, actually it turns itself into a double bottom on the four hour chart, which is finished with this huge, big bullish engulfing, bullish key reversal candle, which is what basically sets off that kind of strong move there as it uh, as it runs its way all the way up there. So there you go, ladies and gentlemen. We'll draw to a close there. I, I hope you found that useful. I hope that's given you a bit of insight into, you know, how uh, short squeeze is, what it is, how it occurs, where it occurs, how you can, you know, identify that as a squeeze is occurring. How you can see it as you know almost sometimes like a false breakout that becomes a short squeeze that can actually become an opportunity for you so go away look at your charts practice it see how did those markets react when they came down to those big treble zero numbers it doesn't always be a treble zero number but you find that they are very very uh, useful so as always it just uh, remains for me to say that you know um thank you very much for joining us uh, the feedback form will come through after this. So we'd really appreciate if you just take a few moments to let us know what you think. And as always, I wish you the very best of success in your own trading, ladies and gentlemen. And I hope you have a fabulous trading week. Take care and trade well. Cheers.